Hi everyone and welcome back to Arctic RC today for TopRCHobby.com and we finally got a plane that we have been waiting almost a year on. We have the ASW28. This is a 2 meter wingspan sports glider. So let's take a look what's in the box and then talk a little bit about it. Every time I do an unpacking of these bigger planes from Top RC Hobby, uh, I really get surprised what you get in overall quality. Of course, I've been opening this box because it had some uh, minor dents during shipping, so I wanted to make sure that everything was okay before I showed you guys this. But anyway, you have the manual. We are going to go through that a little bit later. On top here we have the wings. Beautiful. And as you can see you have ball link. That is cool. You have protectors for the servo. You have servo cases which means that it's easier to replace the servo. You have flaps and ailerons. And you have mounts on the tip of the wing for the winglets that we are going to check out a little bit later. Next wing. Here you have the winglets. They come in two pairs. That means if you lose one or break one, you have a spare one. Two left and two rights. Click them in and push them backwards so they stick to the plane. You can also choose to glue them, but then it's more of a hassle to get them off if you break them. So, red winglets. And then we have the horizontal stabilizer. Uh, this is something that is a concern of me all the time when I get these types of planes. And uh, with that, I mean a T tail plane because I always wonder how much flex it is because you really want them to be as stiff as possible and that is for me now to find out and for you guys to find out as well. So here also uh, bowling connectors, cool. And here you have uh, the CNC metal rods these ones are screwed into the fuselage of the plane and you can just push the wings on it. Uh, I'm not sure why they chosen CNC because this will create a little bit more weight than necessary. <laughs> Look at this! is really really beautiful folding propeller detachable hatch and insane amount of space here you can use a four cell battery from 2200 to 3600 I have some 5000 uh, laying around so we're going to see if we can fit them in here as well and of course the best thing of everything when you're cold oil on your fingers is that you don't have to fiddle around with wires because this one has a quick connector on both sides which will be a time saver when it's cold outside. Um, usually uh, these quick connectors comes with white cables inside. Um, I'm going to change that but we can talk a little bit about it later. Uh, and the reason that I want to remove the Y cables is because I want to have individual settings for the flaps and the ailerons so that I have more control and that I also can use the flaps as ailerons if I like to. So the foam that comes with the plane is actually uh, great to use because you can use them as a cradle when you are fiddling with the plane. So we are going to use uh, these ones and I'm just going to add some small modification to them and just make a half a circle that's cool enough 
So, when you have done that, you can put the plane on here, like this. And you're good to go, trying to figure out stuff in the plane and you can move it, uh, not scratching the plane and so on. So, packing material is also good for uh, working material. So, before we start mounting, let's do some technical babble. It has a wingspan of 2020 millimeters, 2000 millimeter without the winglets. The length is 1165 millimeters. The weight is about 1800 grams. It has an 840 kV motor, 40 amp ESC. Approximately flight time is 10 to 15 minutes. And you can use a four cell battery from 2200 and up uh, as long as it fits. And we are going to check out how big of a four cell you can fit in this plane and also fly with. It has six nine gram digital Metal Gear servos. It comes with plug in connectors so easy connect the wings when you get to the airfield, functional flaps, and of course. A folding propeller, ball link, control horns and protection for the servos as well. So I'm going to check now if there is Y cables coming from the connection, uh, easy connector ports uh, so that I can replace them before I bind the plane to my uh, receiver of choice. Uh, this plane come in different types uh, that depends on the store selling them and what uh, sort of plane they have uh, ordered. This is a PNP version, that means that the only thing that I need is a receiver radio of my own choice and of course the battery. Uh, you can also buy them RTF, that means they comes with a radio and a battery, uh, but uh, that was not uh, an option for me now. As you can see on the side here, you have some plastic which is there to connect the wings and that is for me a little problem because we know that cold and plastic isn't a good uh, solution but it goes the whole way around and hopefully there is a possibility to buy these uh, separately. Uh, I will definitely check it out uh, in case they break but it looks like they are easy repairable or it's easy to change them so let me see here we have a lot of that one was new that was sort of cool. Here you have for the flaps. You can see that they have got this plug. You have uh, the male here and the female here. And the female is um, a bit bulky connector with two slots for uh, the type of servo. I never seen these before. Cool. Uh, that means that they made Y cable, but easy to remove them. Uh, also, the aileron comes with this type of uh, Y. Not a Y cable. It's a Y plug. It's a dual plug from one to two. Cool. That means less work for me when I'm installing the receiver in the plane and everything is just okay. Battery connector from the ESC is the... Um, what do they call them? XT60 which means that they will fit with my new Spectrum batteries. Cool. And as you can see the battery compartment is rather big so let's find a bigger battery and see if it fits the compartment. So here you have a 2200 milliamp 4 cell battery and here you have a 4000 milliamp 4 cell battery and you can see 
the size difference. But this for sale 4000 milliamp battery, I'm sure will fit in the battery tray. <laughs> Fits super well, uh, no problem at all. And you can even, yeah, if you remove the Velcro straps, which has occupied a, almost a centimeter together on both sides, you will be able to even put a bigger battery in here. So check this out. No problem. So 4000 milliamp, it will be. Uh, of course, we need to check the CG and everything. That's the first thing we are going to do. But that's now sorted out. We can use that one. We were talking about the winglets that comes with this one. And here we need this one. The wing itself, you can fly it without the winglets, but um, the professionals say that it will be more stable with the winglets. I'm not sure. I haven't read too much about it. So what you're going to do is just put them on the side here, like this, and push them backwards, like that. And of course, you can easily put a little piece of uh, uh, clear tape on here. And uh, on the bottom as well, just to make sure that they stay on place. But um, they look quite cool. <laughs> they really, really look cool. And under the wing as well, you have servo protectors, servo arm pro uh, protectors, and you also have tip protector on the wing tips. Uh, that's cool. Uh, we're going to put one of these wings on the plane now just to see how these are working. Yes, to tighten them. And here is another cool thing. When you tighten this rod, there's no movement in it. With an ordinary tube, it will wander and be a little loose. I'm really, really excited about this. I'm so looking forward to test fly this one. I, it's been on my wish list for a long time. Uh, especially after I did fly the Fox. Uh, there were many things that I didn't like about the Fox, uh, but I won't talk it down because it was a beautiful plane, such a cool sound when you dive with it and you came in and this whoosh-like uh, whoosh -like sound that you heard. I hope this one is just as great. Um, The wing uh, leading edge looks thinner. That is a good thing. Uh, and the overall wing shape is beautiful. There's some small damages on the wings. You can't see them right here now, but it's not being handled well by the postal system. I'm sorry that this video will come a bit long, but uh, this is a request from you guys that you want a more in-depth video of uh, the planes. And I will try to give you that. And as you can see here, uh, I don't have a lot of room. You will have two holes here for mounting the screws. And yes, they were. Uh, together with uh, two pieces of uh, Velcro for your battery. Red Velcro. 
but the most important thing for me now is the screws and we have four thick one and two thin ones the thin ones are going to be on the t-tail so we are just going to get a screwdriver and mount the wings if you can't align the screw or get the screw down with uh, on the first attempt do not try to use force because if you break something you will end up needing to glue the wing in place and you don't want to do that so just make sure that you align if you are two on the airfield make sure that one pushes the wing in while the other one puts down the screws let us do the other one even though I said we shouldn't I think we'll be able to manage Sorry, putting the wing over the camera. Let's see here. So, here she is. <laughs> that is insane. Okay, I guess three meter one, the, the F. Jesus. The Fox 3 meter was also a big airplane, but this one really has a shorter uh, body. So now we are going to mount the T tail, uh, the uh, horizontal stabilizer. Also, here you have the servo connector and you have uh, a quick connector here. The main thing here and the trick is to make sure that you put the right colors in the right spots. Another good advice is to set up your plane with a battery and receiver and then connect this one so you can see if you are putting it right into the slot. And also put some tape. Of the connectors so that they won't come loose during flight. Thin clear tape will do a lot and it won't take too much place. Just make sure that nothing binds when it comes to the cables. That is super. Um, so, what concerns me is that it's too much wiggle on these ones. And the top isn't really that wiggly. But there also is a fix for this if it becomes too movable or uh, sort of to loose and that is to use support that comes from the tail bottom and up to the wing ends here and you can use carbon uh, carbon tubes or rods we are uh, running short of light uh, due to we don't have any lights or sun in the winter period so um, without any further ado we're just going to try to fly it set it up and uh, of course 
we will go back to the working bench and talk a little bit more about the plane overall. So uh, let's just fly. <laughs> ah, it's so beautiful. Hey, though, I'm afraid of it. Trim it up a bit because it was a bit nose heavy. You can see how much uh, rudder I have uh, or a horizontal stabilizer. So I need to add some um, uh, weight to the tail or go down on battery size. Perhaps that's the best thing to do. Um, other than that, with full flaps and about 20% down elevator, uh, it breaks fairly good during landing. So um, I'm not going to do anything about the elevator mix now, it's perfect. Um, the only thing is that I need some guiding lights. Uh, and the reason for that is due to the flat light here. It's so hard to see the plane. Yeah, without flaps. But imagine how beautiful it would have been with flaps. <laughs> so, um, there you can see two pilots on one plane. Um, Vidar is more used to flying um, uh, slope soaring. Uh, I'm not that um, familiar with sailplanes. I do like motor gliders though, beautiful, uh, it's a bit snow in the uh, air and it's pretty dark, actually you can't see it because the ISO is really kicking in and um, um, I guess I have to use a lot of uh, neat video to get rid of all the grains during uh, during the edit of this video. But as you can see, ah, she is so beautiful.
landing. Landing. not sure how much we were able to film I'm going to do one more flight just to uh, just to do some passes it is responsive but it also reacts to the wind I have no expo this is something that I will add for the next flight uh, but overall uh, she takes off great no problem tossing it make sure that you have uh, half flaps uh, she will go about 45 degrees up and just turn the flaps off when you are good in the air uh, I really really like it but it is nose heavy right now because I'm using 4000 milliamp 4 cell batteries um, I guess in the manual it says 2200 to 3300 so there is an extra weight in the nose and uh, which is not hard to fly not at all, but it's hard to fly in this light uh, and uh, the plane is pure white, some red wingtips, <laughs> but that doesn't help me at all. <laughs> so we are back now from the airfield. Uh, we have a big problem and that is daylight. We have about one to two hour daylight uh, before it gets dark again. And when it's cloudy, uh, we don't have enough light at all. And I'm filming with the worst low light camera there is on the market. Uh, but anyway, we tried to film with the GoPro 10 and of course the camera. Hopefully uh, I could do uh, good work with uh, what we have. Uh, we didn't do too much fancy stuff with uh, the sailplane or the motor glider. But uh, like those final setups and uh, trims to make it fly good. Uh, we used the 4000 milliamp 4 cell battery from uh, Spectrum and that made it a tad uh, nose heavy so I had to add some uh, up elevator and um, after that she flew great. Uh, another problem today was uh, a bit uh, turbulent wind uh, at the airfield. There was a bit snow in the air so um, Overall the test went fine and I can say that it lived up to my expectation because I've been waiting for this one. Uh, it has an insane amount of power. Uh, it will do vertical climbs, no problem at all. Uh, the rudder surface for the flaps and the ailerons, they are superb, uh, they are wide and they will attack and give you a lot of authority. So make sure to use a little uh, expo in uh, low rates so that uh, you will be able to control it. We flew it without expo, without your rates. Uh, and uh, she was a bit agile in uh, the wind pockets that we flew in. But other than that, no problem at all. Uh, the side rudder, uh, less authority. I don't know why. I think that I don't have enough throw on it. 
so I'm going to give it a little bit more. Uh, when it comes to um, the horizontal stabilizer or as we used to call it, the elevator, uh, more enough authority. But then again, when we put it into dive uh, without any power, you got this cool sound. But when I was going to take her up again, and this is the first time that I have experienced with a glider, is that when I pulled the elevator or the horizontal stabilizer, uh, she moved to the left. Um, there can be fine tuning there. Uh, there can be some fine tuning there, but if you have any suggestions, uh, please state them in the comment below. Um, it can also be that it is a foam model. Um, there is some flex in it, but uh, other than that, she flew super great. And as you can see in the video as well, uh, we did uh, let Vidar fly the motor glider. He's uh, used to flying um, uh, slope soaring uh, without motor, uh, without motors uh, on the plane, of course. And he is used to another setup uh, with a throttle and so on, where you put brakes in the throttle and uh, yeah, you use the stick in a whole other way that. Uh, than I am used to so I need to fly it the way that I like and other people can fly it the way they like but the flaps uh, full flaps um, is all that it has for the servo to stop and I added about 19% down elevator in the mix on full flaps and she breaks super clean uh, when you are going for a uh, landing, you can bring down the speed so much on her and no problem. Vida did take a landing without the flaps and you can see the difference. He used the whole runway whilst I could land it in about 3 meters. So, uh, well, I love flaps. The other thing that I really want to have on this plane or perhaps Top RC Hobby could implements into the plane in an updated version if they're going to do one is light uh, it's only the winglets and the end of the vertical stabilizer that is red other than that you it's just pure white and now during uh, our uh, and now during our season which is about five months with snow. Um, I believe that I need to do some color adjustments on it uh, so that I can see it better. But I will keep you guys updated on what I'm doing. I'm definitely going to add some nav lights on this one. It really deserves it. It's a beautiful plane. Uh, I'm also thinking about adding uh, a blue led light in the canopy but we're going to fly this more in the middle of december uh, the light will turn again and we will see the sun again in january in the end of january and we will have better days more sun and we will for sure fly this but if i can get some lights on it quite quickly i'm going to take it up to the first water if you go into my uh, videos and you can see the water flight with uh, the FMS uh, Super Cub, uh, this water is full of ice and snow now and it's so beautiful to just fly low and slow over this water. Uh, perhaps also add some camera on the plane, uh, make more beautiful shots. That is what I wish to do. But other than that, this is an amazing model. And as I was saying earlier, um, it fulfilled every expectation that I had about it. But there will always be a difference between foam models and uh, composite models for sure. So, but I really like this one and I hope that it will be my winter model, of course, together with some of my other easy to go with in the car models. Uh, and uh, there's there's nothing bad to say about this. I love the quick connectors. Uh, 
I love that it is a lot of space in here and for you guys which are FPV enthusiasts you have so much room in this one that you can do whatever you want and even under the uh, plane you have this uh, went hatch where you can also put a lot of stuff inside so that you can control your FPV equipment. But anyway, the total package, I really, really like it. Um, and I'm glad it found its way to Hirkenes, finally. So I flew my turn with a 4000 milliamp 4 cell battery, 30C. And when I'm checking it, I have about 70% left that's after about five or six minutes so with uh, yeah steady flying you can easily fly 12 to 14 minutes with it when i filmed vida we changed the battery and when i was checking that battery it had left 86 percent after about five minutes of flight because i did uh uh, landing after he was done so about five six minutes uh, but he flew a bit less aggressive than I did so um, 4000 is good and it's not that power hungry as a lot of other plane is but I hope you all enjoyed this video um, I will put the info for uh, the ASW28 in the info section where you can check it out on uh, the homepage for toprchobby.com and of course you can check it out by google it and you will see what store has it in uh, stock if you want to try it out or buy it of course so until next time bye